Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode review. This one's going to be for Season 3, Episode 2, uh, I think it's called A Foot Too Big, I think that's the title. And uh, yeah, let's uh, just get into this episode. Um, right away, I'm just going to say, you know, like, before you even listen to the rest of the video, type in the comments or something like that, have a guess what you think my reaction is to this episode. Uh, because if you've watched my videos and have a general idea of what my opinion is on this show, you probably know how I feel about this episode. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah. in general, my reaction was like, because I, I don't really watch the previews going into these episodes. I don't even look at the episode title. I kind of just like, okay, the episode's there, I'll watch it. And maybe like the season premiere and season finale, I check out the clips for and maybe once or twice during the season. But for the most part, I don't. So I kind of went into this completely blank, not knowing what it was about, and, uh, yeah, so it opens up, you know, potential, they're in the woods, something interesting is happening, new human character, and then, you know, we see Bigfoot, and instantly I'm just kind of like, no, not again, don't, this is not just a repeat of the last episode where it's just like, monster appears in the woods, uh, disrupts what could be interesting character development between all the characters, uh, and it's just like, okay, okay, I'm gonna give it a chance, you know, Bigfoot, could be an interesting idea. Then we see Bigfoot in makeup, and I'm just like, again? And it's just like, oh, um, they're, they're not doing this type of episode in this way, and it just continued, you know, to say, okay, Bigfoot's a girl, that's fine. And Bigfoot w runs off into the woods crying, and they try and use the this comparison for the Donatello April relationship as Donatello Bigfoot, and I'm just like, oh no. And at this stage, my forehead is just in tremendous pain the amount of times like this episode is doing this to me. I feel I really felt like Sokka in The Cave of Two Lovers, that episode of Avatar, just like Chong the Nomad just making me go every single time that something happens in this episode. Um, I just thought, it, it was, I don't think overall it was a very good episode at all. Um, as I said, I had, I had a lot of high potential, uh, high hopes for this season. Uh, episode one was like, fine but not great this one just didn't really give me much hope it's not giving me much hope for the rest of the season anyway uh i was very disappointed with this episode and what it did um not to say that it was all bad there were a few a few scenes here and there in the episode that were okay but on the whole just like is this what every single episode while they're off in the woods basically is this what every single episode is going to be just the exact same stuff as it was in the city, just in the woods, as I, which is what I said in the last review uh, for the first episode of season three, that is this what it's going to be? Just monster in the woods instead of a, mon a mutagen monster every week? And that seems to be the case here. Um, it, it just got, it got so silly towards the end that it really just went past the point of, you know, okay, this show is, you know, very much for kids, you know, it's not meant to be like a kind of more serious type of thing, but like Korra, which also has humour, but kind of does it uh, in a way where it keeps the kind of uh, seriousness of the show. This one's kind of, okay, the Daryllite has a little bit more humour, but this really just took it way too far because at the end of the day, like, look at the situation that these characters are in. They're on their own without any adult supervision for, for most of those characters, you know, probably the first times in their life and that, like, Casey's away from his family. April's uh, away from her father. Her father her father's been remutated again. The turtles are away from Splinter. They don't kind of have him, and they don't know what's up with him. As far as they're aware, he's kind of dead. Do they have a little hope that he may be alive? And there's all this joking going on. Um, there's, you know, they're doing all this weird stuff with Bigfoot. Like April's giving Bigfoot the makeover. It, to me, was just like. Do the writers realize the situation that these characters are in? Because this is the wrong tone to set for this series in terms of what you're doing. Like, that shouldn't be the way that you do these characters in this situation. And that very much disappointed me. Because I kind of like that they had uh, Leo not just involved in the action, that like, he wanted to get involved, but when he took a step down, he, 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 he was injured. I like that. But at the same time, that kind of just asks the question of like, but wait, he was involved in the fight at the end of the first episode, now he's injured again, apparently. It's just like, why could he fight in the first episode but not this one? I'm just not sure. Um, 
Uh, then in terms of just the rest of the episode, yeah, the Bigfoot thing was a problem. The finger, the finger, thing, the, the, the villain's name is the finger, and then he has this weird sixth figure or something like that, talks to a kind of shrunken head of apparently his mother. Um, that was weird, you know, there was no setup really at all for it, and what this whole thing was about, other than to be a villain for Bigfoot in this episode, and then the the most the most silly part of the episode was nearly to, nearly the last one of the last scenes in that the the finger realizes Bigfoot's a girl and then all of a sudden the romance bubble comes up and just like no they're not no please no. and then yeah they, they they take they run off into the woods together it's just like really show really I get that this was meant to be a romance episode but you just did it the complete wrong way thankfully though there were probably two scenes in the episode that were actually quite good and that they're kind of scenes I was actually waiting for and that was for them to do something with the Donatello April relationship and actually like explore that in some way and so Donatello makes the music box for April hands it to her and she just doesn't know how to react to it because you know she's obviously still struggling you know does she like Casey does she like um Donnie or what we really don't know what her, situ her thoughts are in the situation even by the end of this episode with the two good scenes we still don't know that, so I still think they need to address it more, but all things considering, these these were two pretty good scenes. I quite like them. Um, and so that leaves Donatello really kind of down on himself, not like thinking just like, okay, she's just not interested in me. The other turtles basically say that to her. They, they use the comparison of like Bigfoot with him to get him kind of further away from the idea. And then the final scene... I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was actually a, 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 a quite a really good se scene for this show. Though it didn't really give us much, but I liked that there was kind of emotion involved. That Donatello went up to her and just like, look, I won't be kind of approaching you anymore with this sort of stuff. I realise that this is the same situation as you know, me and Bigfoot, you and me. Um, I'm just a mutant and stuff like that. And then she said, no, you're not just a mutant, you're my mutant. Kisses him on the cheek. And that's fine and all, but... Other than the fact that, you know, okay, they're friends, like, it, it, it doesn't address any of the whole situation that, like, okay, so is Donatello just going to go back to, like, giving her all these uh, things? Or was this just kind of an agreement that he's not going to be like that anymore and, like, uh, giving her all these gifts and it's kind of going to be more out in the open? Or what? It Was this just a thing, you know, you know you're know my friend? Or was this a thing, like, I actually do like you, I'm just confused right now? It's confusing to me because I don't know what the situation is like is are her and Casey actually dating right now does she like Casey does she like Donnie and in what way it, it it's confusing and this scene even though I like the emotion in it didn't address that then you have some even more confusing scenes in that um Raph uh, early on in the episode after the music box incident happens um tells um Donnie that you know like uh, she she's like basically I can't remember the exact line, something like, you know, she's not a mutant, uh, she's she's a girl, and something like that. You can see the problem here. And I'm, I just kind of, like, had this moment in the middle of the episode where I'm just like, have you forgotten that you've established that April is, like, half mutant or something like that? Wasn't it Donatello himself who actually revealed that? Weren't you all around and heard this? Doesn't she know this? Like, where is this being addressed, that she's a mutant too, she's not fully human? No. And then even by the end of the episode, she's just like, you're my mutant. And I'm just like, no, you're not going to address this at all. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's that. Um, it, it was just, there was so much disappointment in this episode. Because I thought, like, as far as I'm aware, this season has like six or something like that. Less episodes than previous seasons. But they're still doing these episodes that feel like just like, we still don't need this many episodes. And we're trying to fill out the quota. Well, 26 feels like massive amounts for this show. And honestly, like the first two seasons, so many of the episodes almost aren't required. This this season only has 20 episodes, and already I feel like the first two episodes aren't even required reviewing. Um, that sort of thing. So I, uh, I'm almost kind of like, you know, if they do a season four, is the show confirmed for season four? It might be. Um, lower the episodes again and just tell a solid story. There's n you. I don't think the show needs to have that many episodes if they don't have enough content to put in those episodes and they have to introduce a new monster every single week um, just to kind of 
feel like the quota, but um, yeah, and 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 again, you know, I always compare the show to Cora, and you know, they, they're different shows, and it's maybe an unfair comparison, but at the same time, they're two shows on Nickelodeon. They're they're in my opinion Nickelodeon's best two shows, and it just I always do this just to highlight the comparison between I suppose what shows can be with Cora and what this show what level this show is at right now, and. You compare, like, Turtles and Korra are on the same kind of uh, run this, this time around. They both had their premiere the same week. They both had their episodes, too, uh, this week. And the gulf in class of the, f the first episodes was massive, just because um, the, the first episode of Korra Book 1, uh, Book 4, was so much better than the first episode of Season 3 of Turtles. And it was even bigger this week, because Korra alone was the complete antithesis of this episode in the sense of like Korra alone was nothing but character development, nothing but focus on Korra um, while, and in a way they're similar situations the end of book 3 of Korra left Korra in a position where she kind of like Leonardo, she was injured and you wanted the focus to be on her and so you know the first episode shows us her after her recovery and you kind of wonder like how did she get in this position? Why, what's her mental state like? And then episode 2 focuses completely on that. And um, with Turtles, the thing with Leonardo is kind of addressed in the first episode a little bit, but then you're, you're still confused. That's, you know, he's injured, but he can fight, but he's not injured. And now episode 2, he is injured, but he doesn't have any problem with it. He doesn't seem to be dealing with anything. There's no drive to better himself or that much. Um, it's just, like, what this show should be doing and what it actually is doing are very different things and it's getting to be a little bit of a problem now and um, you know um, I don't think I'm gonna like drop this series just because I don't think it's doing what I think it should be doing I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt in that um, say what you will say what I will I suppose about the first two seasons and how it's told its story it has managed to tell somewhat of a reasonably good story when the finale time comes around and that that I will say, that I do really enjoy the season two finale, and I'm hoping you know there has to be some big moments. Obviously, whenever we return to the city and see what's up with Splinter, Karai, Shredder, the Krang, whenever the turtles decide they're going back, that's going to be big moments. But right now, where we are in the series right now, two episodes in, nothing has happened. Like nothing in terms of character development with these, with these guys has happened that much. And there's so much places they could be going. There's so much potential just with the situation these characters are in. Korra is executing on kind of similar positions with some of its characters. Turtles just isn't. And I've, I'm very interested to see people's thoughts on um, this um, episode. Because I know, I, I suppose, compared to some other people, maybe I'm more negative on the show than others. But I try to be consistent in that. Like, for me, I, I consider Korra to be the best show out right now. And thus my opinion reflects that. And that I like that better than the other shows not just because I'm a fan I honestly think it's better and so it kind of reflects that that I think Turtles is kind of like <laughs> there and thereabouts Star Wars Rebels has had a strong opening though it, this was a second episode kind of had Turtles syndrome and that like it's kind of like oh an episode doesn't have much plot doesn't have much character it's just an episode so Turtles vs. Star Wars Rebels, I think, is going to be a very interesting fight. And I think there, there are two shows that you really can actually compare against each other. Both CGI shows, both confirmed for multiple seasons long in advance. Um, so I'm going to be, the, the comparison between those two is probably better than Korra. But um, still, that, that's been the review. Uh, thanks for watching, and bye.